Hey, hey, we're saints. Good morning. God bless and keep you. Welcome to St. George. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. A gentleman and his wife, an older gentleman and his wife had gotten into a terrible fight. And he went to a bar. And he started ordering drink after drink after drink, consuming a ton. The bartender finally says, sir, everything okay? Why are you, why are you drinking so much? He said, well, my wife and I got in a huge fight, and she said she would not talk to me for a month. The bartender, hearing, you know, this sad and kind of negative story, decided to put a good spin on it and be positive. And he said, well, that can't be all bad, right? I'm going to give you a little peace, a little quiet time to think. And the man said, yeah, but today's the last day. <laughs> yeah, see, see, that was a good one. You got that one. That's good. <laughs> you know, in a world, this world that we live in, there's not, it feels like there's not a lot of positivity. Everybody's really negative and always looking for or from the perspective of negativity. In fact, I think the world is pushing upon us this negative narrative that wants to keep us in fear and keep us hopeless without a hope of the future, of the resurrection. I read this morning on, I went to the, to the internet and I read, I'm going to read for you, article, uh, headlines from a news, one of our news outlets that you find online. Listen to the language, just the way that they speak. And you can hear the, the fear that is being, these are just, I read, these are the articles, I didn't read them, they're titles, I'm just going to read them in order that I wrote them down. Attendees felt like they were drowning. Beyond your control, a recipe for deadly crowd crush. You hear those words. Losers. Scramble for a rescue plan. What a fake 2016 BLM rally tells us about Russian disinformation. Interesting, the very next one says, the next front in Facebook's misinformation battle. Like, is it disinformation or misinformation? I don't even know what they're talking about. And of course, you can't end without more than 10,000 patients caught COVID in the hospital. They never made it out. So you can hear the language, the, the words of like battle, misinformation, disinformation, dead. Like you hear these words and we become so consumed and maybe even hopeless, right? Where there is, we said before, there's no hope and we don't trust in the power of God. The message that we want to share today is that indeed, warrior saints trust in God and his power over all sources of darkness, We trust in Christ's victory, the victory of light over darkness, the triumph of good over evil, and Christ's great victory, life over death. And in a sea, in a world of negative information that we are all being pulled to accept and drink freely, we find ourselves this morning with a beautiful story from the Gospel of Luke chapter 8. There is a man named Jairus, and Jairus is kind of a a ruler, a leader in the synagogue, much like our parish priest might be. And as Jesus is walking through the streets of the city, Jairus comes to him, and he says, Lord, please come to my house. He begs him to come to his house because Jairus had a 12-year-old daughter, his only daughter, and she was dying. So he says, Lord, come and heal my daughter. This is the the plea, the request that he's making. And Jesus willingly goes to save the daughter. Now in the midst of it, you can imagine like in the the tight and old narrow streets of Jerusalem, there were a million people and they're all crowding and pressing around Jesus. And one particular woman has an ailment and she's had it for many, many years. And she's gone to the doctor, spent all her money. She can't be healed. So she comes up behind Jesus and and just kind of touches the the hem of his robe, right? Just touches it. And immediately she's healed. This healing takes place in a seemingly impossible situation, right? I mean, like, she spent all her money. It's like she's been to every doctor in the, you know, uh, in, the, in the city. There's no one to heal her. And yet she has trust in Christ and she's healed. And he says a funny thing to her. Like, he, he's asking, like, who touched me? I know, I know what happened. The, the apostles, you know the story. They got in his face. What are you talking about, Jesus? There's a million people. Everybody's touching you. He said, nope, I felt it. And the woman comes and says... I touched you, Lord, and I was healed. His words, daughter, go your way, go in peace, for your faith, your trust in my power over darkness, over evil, has made you well. 
She trusted that Christ was able to overcome all things, and she was made well. And then, listen to this, the very next verse. The very next verse. Someone comes to Jesus from Jairus' house and says, don't bother the teacher anymore. The child is dead. So right after this beautiful witness of Christ's power over all things, the negative disinformation comes in. As if to say, we just watched him heal this lady. Could he not help this sick child? Where did the faith vanish to so quickly? And Jesus says, no, 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 trust me. Come with me. If you go with me, you'll see I'm going to heal her. So they go to the house. And when they get to the house, they're all weeping and wailing. Be wailing, it says. For the daughter was dead. And Jesus said to her, people, don't weep. She's not dead. He is giving the positive news of his salvation to this family in this house. And what do they do in response? They laugh at him. Because they knew she was dead. Right? So he's, he's just healed this woman. He's now in the home to heal the daughter. And they mock and laugh him. And Jesus says, as Jesus does, child, arise. And he raises her. Showing his power over all things. The most important thing, over death, right? Like, you could imagine that healing a woman might be, of, of her sickness might be a, a big thing, a good thing, but the power over death, nobody has that. And he goes to this girl and raises her. All of that positive information, that beautiful, loving gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, was rejected by the, the people and laughed at the Lord, Right? And I think sometimes as we are living and struggling through whatever our world is, we find that there's a lot of negative disinformation out there. And it is pulling us away from our trust in God, right? Like the biggest blocker that we have to really fully committing and just being all in with Christ really is the media sources. That's why I chose to read them this morning. I mean, like all of the media, whether it's your news or your social media, all of that, that information that we constantly consume, it is designed... Division, designed divisiveness. It is designed in its language to split us apart and by so doing to split us apart from God. And so the more you drink the Kool-Aid of the media, the farther apart we become from one another and ultimately from God himself. So as an anecdote to that, sorry, not an anecdote, an antidote, right? Anecdote is a little story. An antidote, doc, right? That's a, <laughs> it cures the disease, sorry. An antidote to the media consumption is to begin to think positively. We must be positive people. And it is not something that you can say, well, it's just I feel positive or I don't. It's that, no, we have a choice and we're going to see that in just one moment. Our first practical point, you must begin, beloved. By putting your trust in Christ our God. You've got to start from that. Look, we just heard in this story that he raised or healed a woman who had been sick for many years. He then raised a dead child. <clears throat> he then, as we of course know the, the end of the story, will go to the cross himself and be raised on the third day, crushing the power of death. We know that. We believe that. Why then would we not put our trust that he could also conquer all of our challenges and all of our monsters? I don't mean to say that, that God will wave a, a magic wand and everything will magically be perfect and you'll never get sick and you may not struggle at work or in your relationships. That's not true and real. You know that. But by Christ's power, all of those things can be transcended. By living a Christ-like life, we can transcend those things. And you must begin by trusting that. Our second practical point is uber practical. Get your vitamin D, right? Like there are ample studies, many, many scientific studies that tell us about how the, the consuming of vitamin D really helps the positive mindset and the, the emotional health of a person. And being in Arizona, it's free, baby. Go outside, right? Like, I mean, you can get vitamin D in the sun 360 days a year. So perhaps, I mean, like you think about what we've done in the last year, we've really been, well, year and change since March of 2020, we've been like exiled from, from people, 
We've also been locked in our homes and our businesses, right? I mean, everyone's working from home now. We were quarantined for a long time. How many of us really have felt the suffering of all that? Get out in the sun. Go play in the sun. Have your morning coffee in the sun. Most studies say to us that it's about 20 minutes a day of good sunlight, real light that will so help your mood and your mental health. Get your vitamin D. And last, our third practical point, you must decide to be positive. Earlier this week, we were at a, a men's Bible study class, and one of the gentlemen in the discussion said, it was a married businessman's Bible study, and one of the gentlemen said, you know, I decide to be positive. Every day I wake up and I make the decision, even if I don't feel like it, I may wake in a bad mood, I decide to be positive. And I thought about it, and I thought, like, it was a powerful, it struck me really powerful because it was a decision for this person. He wasn't going to just allow life and the circumstances and all of the, the stimuli that come his way to determine his positive or negative outlook. It was a conscious choice that he make and he set, made and said, I am going to decide to be positive every day. Powerful to me. And I thought, well, as we decide how to be, if we're deciding in our lives to be positive every single day, how might we do that? I think the first part of it, this is practical point 3A, if you will, is to stop looking for the negative. You all know those people, many of them troll the internet. We even have some in our parish here, I know, who constantly look for the negative. Like they're always on the prowl waiting for someone else to make a mistake so they can say, ah, they're looking for it. They're waiting to find your sins, for many reasons. One, so they probably don't have to deal with their own. But watching your sins so they can say, gotcha. And somehow, that makes them feel better. And as I think about that, I realize, how sad is that? Someone must be living in such misery that they want to surround themselves with the failings of others. Sad. Sad place to be. Heavy. Remember, we always talk about a, a bucket of water and the sponge. You're like a sponge in the bucket who absorbs. What must the person's life be like, the water in their bucket, if their only focus is waiting for you to screw up? Instead, rather than look at others' failings, why don't we count our blessings? Every morning. And especially since we had that conversation with the married businessmen, I decide to wake up with a positive attitude. Like I roll over and I look that next to me is the most beautiful and amazing woman on the planet. I may give her grief and tell jokes about her, but she's a stunning, amazing human being. And then I get out of my bed and I walk into the kitchen and there's two more beautiful girls who are almost equally as stunning as their mother. And I look up and I say, oh my God, there's a roof on my head. And I open the refrigerator and it's got food in it. And there's water to drink and there's coffee. And then I go to this beautiful life that I live where I, I, I have to work hard, believe me. But I get to be with all of you beautiful people and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as I'm driving, talking about our vitamin D, oh my God, it's sunny almost every day of the year here. We live, it's hot, I get it, but it's beautiful. There's no rain and overcast and snow that we deal with on, for lengths of time. It's that, oh my God, even though I may not deserve any of it, this rocks. And so rather than always be on the prowl for other people's mistakes, look to your blessings and say, thank you, Jesus. Because we're all blessed. We all have challenges. I get it. We all have struggles. And the world is going to send that negative narrative out there to us. And, and you can drink that Kool-Aid, and you could be in that, the, that, put that water in your bucket, and you will absorb it. Or you can decide that I will be positive and trust in Christ's power over death and therefore all the other monsters. May our great God and Savior Jesus Christ bless and keep you. Amen.